for the 5th of September edition. Credico, with that, is appealing to the biggest pool of votes in the Democratic Party. It's the anti-war vote. Cuomo has nothing to offer, and Zephyr Teachout won't even take a, a position against new wars in the Middle East. So Credico 2014, and uh, let me invite you to go out and vote for Randy Credico next Tuesday in the New York Democratic primary. And uh, that's a, bro- a vote for content and for program. You've heard it. And it's also the best protest vote. You get more bang for your buck out of a protest vote for Credico than you do for the very complacent and mild uh, foundation-linked Soros clone Zephyr Teachout. All right, now let's just, we got to do ISIS quickly here at the close. Um, you want to you wanna solve the problem there in, uh, in Iraq with ISIS. Here's what you do. You tell the Turks, a NATO country, close that border. No assistance can go across. No more border traffic. Blockade ISIS, starve them out. You tell the Gulf, you tell Saudis, Qatar, the rest of them, Gulf Cooperation Council, no more money, no more logistics for ISIS. Cut that off. You also invite the Saudis, say, look, you have the uh, religious scholars, you have these ulima, right? You have the scholars. Where are the fatwas condemning ISIS as a monstrosity? Same thing for Qatar. How about that guy, Taradawi, the big star of Al Jazeera in Arabic? Why, not, why doesn't he condemn ISIS. Will he do it? I haven't heard it so far. And then use the armies you've got. The Turkish army is big and capable, and the U.S. has been paying huge military aid to Turkey. The Syrian army, help them. Don't bomb them. Help them. And there's no way down the middle. And the Iraqi army, right? Revive them. Revive the Kurds. Revive whatever you you like. Um now, the big debate is, do you bomb uh, Syria? Why not Why not help the Syrians to take care of their own internal problems, provide targeting, provide information, and let them attack? Let them uh, take this guy, Baghdadi, and hurl him into eternity as required. Um, so you also have uh, cooperation from Iran and f- uh, from, from Russia, right? We're told that Russia has provided MiGs and trainers – for Syria to make up some of their uh, losses. So um, we've also got to defeat this idiotic theory voiced this past week by Richard Engel that Assad helped ISIS by attacking the other groups. That's simply because ISIS was all the way out in Raqqa and Assad had to deal with uh, threats near the Damascus uh, central point. <laughs> you notice that uh, ISIS was trying to avoid where the fight was. So... Uh, there's obviously some kind of a briefing paper going around that has 15 to 17 airstrips controlled by Assad that some people in Washington want to bomb. That's absolutely insane, and you will be impeached uh, if you do that, Obama. Then you've also got um, McCain, right, an exchange on Greta Van Susteren that seemed to uh, reveal more than usual the idea that McCain wanted to fund ISIS or ISIL back in 2012-2013, and apparently it was Obama personally who said no. So there's an interesting um, interesting, uh, point uh, going on. Now, um, we've already gone through the stuff that ISIS has a large contingent of sociopaths. Remember Musawi, Zacharias Musawi, the 13th or whatever he was of 2001, uh, his own lawyers pled that he was a paranoid schizophrenic and tried to get him off, and they didn't get anywhere. Let's also look at um, Pakistan. What's going on in Pakistan? Is somebody destabilizing Pakistan with a color revolution? We need to know. Notice that Zawahiri is targeting India. Well, of course, when you see Modi appearing at a uh, BRICS meeting with Putin and the rest of the BRICS, then uh, the U.S. acquires a motive to send in al-Qaeda. Zawahiri is trying to deliver. He's trying to make sure he keeps his grant, not just ISIS, but al-Qaeda, of course. So Zawa is out there targeting India, and that has 180 million Muslims, right, as the British India office always reminded us. Um, and then, of course, Richard Reed was also a mentally ill person, right, from the Brixton Finsbury Mosque Axis, the shoe bomber. All right. Now, um, 
that's what what needs to be done in that uh, part of the world. Now, a uh, couple of things. Um, Draghi, the European Central Bank. Let's let's examine this hypothesis. Will there be some kind of a uh, instability crash, correction, whatever, in October or thereabouts? Draghi is now looking at the uh, specter of deflation in the European uh, Union because of these lunatic austerity policies, right, that he has um, not uh, prevented, right, which others, you know, Cameron, we can thank Cameron and above all Merkel, right? Uh, so, um, uh, Drag, according to the Washington Post editorial today, Draghi was reacting to a rash of dire economic data showing that Europe was slipping dangerously close to inflation. So here's what he's done. The European Central Bank interest rate <clears throat> for zombie banks is now 0.5%, one twentieth of 1%, a nominal fee. Um, and he's going to start his own QE. He's going to begin buying toxic derivatives. It says here, a... Uh, Program of security purchases, says the Washington Post, meaning buying up toxic derivatives, fear of, of deflation. The European economy flatlining. Uh, how would you do it? Well, I would say, good, keep your 0.05% interest rate. That's fine. We can live with that. But not for zombie banks, not for hedge fund hyenas, but for production Production meaning tangible, physical production, building infrastructure, manufacturing commodities, agriculture, uh, other improvements, scientific research. Get your space program going. Get your uh, scientific research program going. Basically, 0% uh, uh, loans from the European Central Bank over long periods. And if you're going to have any effect, right, you, Italy, France, maybe – uh, me, Italy, Spain, <laughs> hard to say, right? You, Portugal, you, Greece, then fight for the 0% interest rate. Uh, otherwise, we're told that the sanctions from NATO, according to uh, Colonel Blimp over there, right, Perfide Cameron, uh, he's telling us that uh, the sanctions are being worked on and will be made available soon. Uh, the big word this week was that it would be sanctions targeting European bonds. The Russians would would then respond, right? If the Russians say uh, we won't buy Russian bonds, uh, sorry, if the NATO bloc says we won't buy European bonds, <laughs> sorry, Russian bonds, then Russia turns around and says, great, we won't buy European bonds and we won't buy U.S. bonds. And by the way, we have 300 to 400 billion in treasury securities that we are now dumping. That is panic. So as he says, Putin, don't mess with Russia. It's pointless. Don't start military adventures. Ask Hitler, ask Napoleon, ask Charles of Sweden. Not good. Ask various Polish generals. It's, um, it's a fool's errand. Um, now a couple of things. Dem Re Republican party looking real bad. Uh, McDonald and his wife found guilty in Virginia of corruption. Now, remember, this guy was the model of the holy roller. He was the Christian elected official. He was in there with transvaginal wands. Um, he was associated with Cucinelli, Ken Cucinelli, who ran for governor now and failed. Republican Party in Virginia looking really bad. Zero statewide offices. The only places they can win are in their gerrymandered uh, state uh, legislature, Senate, and Assembly. So think what this means, right? A Republican presidential hopeful. But also look at this. McDonald knocked out, Christie knocked out, Perry knocked out. I've been saying that that's Jeb Bush, but now I'm seeing that may be Mitt. It may be a united front at this point of Mitt and Jeb. Hard to say. Uh... Jesse Benton has quit the, uh, Mc, Mc, Mitch McConnell, showing that the Paul Todd machine was corrupt. And we'll see you next week on World Crisis Radio. <laughs>